Happy New Year, season's greetings from one and all from Rough Cuts, and welcome to the first edition of Rough Cuts for 2022, as we get started with a new era and a new year with Rough Cuts and a whole lot on the world of professional wrestling. Going to come right at you for myself. Of course, Bill Laughter has his videos, and we're going to be bringing you the best in wrestling anywhere. So in this edition of Rough Cuts, as 2021 came to a close, the talk will be his match of the year for Melton Men and Women, Hulk Hogan, maybe going back to the WWE, Kevin Owens re-signing with the WWE, good or bad. All this on Rough Cuts. Please be advised that these are my opinions, my opinions only. They're not affiliated with Bill After or any wrestling promotion whatsoever. Let's get right to it. Uh, match of the year for 2021. Uh, both matches of, of the year are going to come from AEW, in my opinion. The women's, Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa, they tore the place down on national television. I mean, that was, that was a pay-per-view quality women's match brought on national television, and... They pulled out all the stops in a weapons-filled match, and Brett Baker, Brett Baker obviously retaining, but the match itself from both performers, I mean, far exceeded any pay-per-view women's match or any televised match uh, throughout 2021, but definitely exceeded any pay-per-view women's match, I felt. And it definitely just stole the show and stole the year, in my opinion. And I can't wait for the rematch. It'll be coming up in the early part of 2022. Curious what the stipulations will be. I, I don't think it's going to be a hair versus hair. That, that I think we are in agreement on. But um, we're going to get some sort of stipulation. Will Britt lose the title? That's been the question I've been asked. I think she's going to lose it to Thunder Rose, to be honest with you. I really think she will lose it to Thunder this time. Uh, just what will the stipulations be and things of that nature. But I think, I think she will drop the title to Thunder and you know, go on to chase for it back and maybe make her more of an evil heel as she's so frustrated with losing the title. There's so many possibilities. She's had it for a while and people have been clamoring for Thunder Rosa to take the title and I think she will get the title in the rematch. Match of the year from the men's. Arn Anderson said it best. This was the best wrestling match he ever witnessed in the last 25 years. Bill After said as well, it's one of the best matches he has ever watched in a long time. I agree. The fans have spoken to me on Twitter. You've got to make it match of the year, Sal. I am. Daniel Bryanson and Hangman Page, yes, for over an hour, despite the finish, it was still a very entertaining, edge of your seat type of match from beginning to end. Despite the commercials and things, but still. They delivered above and beyond a, high, a, a quality pay-per-view match. I mean, Daniel Bryanson always delivers pay-per-view quality type matches to begin with. And now you had Hangman Page getting the belt. And people have been clamoring for him to get the belt in AEW, which he finally did. And then these two just put on an, an amazing five-star, ten-star, hundred-star type match. I don't think there's any argument in any promotion for national television that Tony Khan delivered and made it the first match on TV and kept you on the edge of your seat for over an hour and then left you with, I can't wait for the rematch. Why did this finish happen like this? Because we're going to get a rematch. And I even questioned the finish as well, but still, I mean, you can't take away from what the oohs, the ahs, the close falls. I mean, it, it had every bit of drama and intrigue that you could ask for. I mean, there is not anybody that is viewing this or even on the internet and social media that did not agree that this was match of the year. It had to be. Had to be by far match of the year. So Daniel Bryan and Hangman Page for 2021 pulled the rabbit out of the hat and delivered match of the year beyond any reasonable doubt. So those are my matches of the year for both men and women. Let's switch shift gears for a bit. Hulk Hogan? Going to the WWE? What? What's he doing? He can't wrestle no more. Bill Apter did a thing, an article on Sportscopedia that he, that he does. 
and um, talked about the possibility of maybe Hogan, you know, circulating out there that Hogan would maybe go back to the WWE and, and work for Vince. Not as a performer, with all the surges and everything, he, his in-ring days are far, far behind him, but to maybe become a Raw General Manager or a Smack General General Manager or maybe work behind the scenes like Bruce Pritchard and think you know and, and storylines and developing characters and things like that. My my take on this is kind of iffy. I first of all I, I know even if he's behind the scenes or coming out behind in front of the scenes, I think that you have the guy in the WWE already that could can do the creative control if you just give him more freedom to do it. I mean, obviously everything goes to Vince, but you have Paul Heyman there. Paul Heyman is a mastermind genius, a mad scientist for developing talent and stories. I mean, look at his track record and success with ECW when he was with the NWA and everything. I mean, he's been all over. I'm not saying Hogan couldn't have input and have a role, but you have Paul Heyman there that's got to have some sight. Now, maybe Hogan, maybe Heyman and Vince are going to, you know, probably clash in a little bit, which we don't see, you know, we don't really know what the deal is. Well, you don't think Hogan and Vince aren't going to clash either? I mean, they've had their indifferences over the years as well. And now you're going to bring maybe Hogan in to say, hey, look, you know, I think we could do this, we could do that. How much freedom is Hogan really going to have? Really? I mean, how much freedom is Hogan really going to have? I mean, the bottom line, it's going to go through Pritchard and Vince. And Vince is going to have final say. I mean, it's Vince that calls the shots. So if you're going to bring Hogan in and Hogan's going to, he's got to pass everything to Vince, and Vince may or may not like this, that, or the other thing, what's the point? Are you going to put Hogan in front of the camera and maybe bring him out as a general manager and maybe try to boost up ratings, which is possible? as, you know, as an on-screen to come out, but he can't wrestle anymore. You know, he can come out and promote a match or make a match, but behind the scenes, it's all going to go through Vince. For that, you have Paul Heyman for it. Could Hogan maybe manage somebody, you know, like Paul Heyman is doing? Maybe Hogan comes back and manages Roman Reigns because Heyman is not with Reigns anymore and maybe siding with Lesnar or maybe it's a setup to go against Lesnar and he's really siding with... Roman, maybe this is a setup. I mean, we'll find out what the fallout could be. But couldn't Hogan manage somebody and be a mouthpiece? With Hogan's, you know, promos, I mean, you can't really argue his promos and his voice work. Could he manage someone maybe like a Roman Reigns? Maybe a Kevin Owens. Get Kevin Owens over. Maybe a Finn Balor. Get Finn Balor over. But at the end of the day, behind the scenes, it's all going to go to Vince as long as Vince is in charge of us. So if you're going to do that, and you're going to have another voice to develop his ideas, yeah, Heyman's probably given about a billion ideas. It's kind of like if if they think me. I mean, if I'm going to bring Hogan back, I would do like what you know Heyman's doing on screen with Roman. Let Hogan manage somebody. Let Hogan manage somebody. That's what I would do. That that's what I would do. I would let Hogan manage somebody, and of course let him have his creative input. But again, then it's going to go to events. Uh, as long as he doesn't step inside the square circle, I, I, I don't think he's going to be going back inside the ring. And again, I mean, it, it couldn't hurt. It ain't going to make things better or worse as far as ratings or anything. But if he's going to have some kind of input as far as talent and, and build up, then we need to be able to see it translate on screen. And I don't know how much it's going to translate on screen because it's really going to go through Vince and the ideas are going to go through Vince as well. That's just my thoughts on it. So, and again, Paul Heyman, like I said, numerous times, Paul Heyman's already there. So with Paul Heyman being there as long as he has, Paul Heyman knows the entire rosters inside and out. How much does Hogan really know about the current rosters? That's another question to be answered. Heyman knows everybody from Raw, SmackDown, and probably NXT as well. So again, you're bringing Hogan in, but how much has Hogan really followed the roster he hasn't been behind the scenes with the roster. Maybe his ideas, but Paul Heyman has been around and knows what everybody's limitations and capabilities really are. But it all goes to Vince. So my take is it couldn't hurt. It could help. But I'm kind of, you know, 
in, in the middle of this. I mean, I don't have a yay or nay on it one way or the other. I just, I just think there are other people already there already. If you're going to bring Hogan back, as like I said a couple of times during this segment, bring him back to maybe manage somebody and be a voice and get somebody over the way Heyman got Brock over and, is getting, and getting Roman over. You know, you can do something along those lines. I wouldn't have a problem with that because Hogan could definitely sell a promo and, and have that mystique about it uh, with somebody, maybe like a Kevin Owens or Finn Balor or something. That would be ideal. Kevin Owens re-signed a multi-year deal. He re-signed a multi-year deal. Yes, he did. Good or bad? I've been getting questions about this left and right. Is it good or bad? Um, well, he's 37 years old. He's been with the WWE forever and a day. So if he would have gone to AEW, it's really not going to change the ratings the way CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Adam Cole, I mean, maybe more like Romero is there, the Hardy, a Matt Hardy type of thing, yeah, Ruby. I mean, look at all these former WWEs. Black is now in there. Black got a you know an interesting pop too. But how many former WWE guys are you really going to bring in when you're trying to continue to build a brand and develop young talent? Kevin Owens did the right thing. Kevin Owens has been there long enough. You know, enough people have left. Kevin Owens, no, he's not going to go to AEW and get the belts, one of the belts. It'll be a pop and drop type of thing. He's already been well established in the WWE. He has been a title holder. He has done everything and everything you can ask for. He knows his place in the hierarchy in the WWE. He wouldn't have to play second fiddle to the Adam Coles, Kenny Omega, Daniel Bryan's, the senior punk, and the list goes on and on. AEW is stacked and loaded enough right now. It was the right decision to sign a multi-year deal to stay with the WWE from a professional and a personal standpoint. We don't know what the money is. And I don't think Kevin Owens really worried about the money, but I'm sure he was taken care of fairly well. It comes down to how am I going to be utilized? And how would he be utilized in the WWE compared to what he's going to be, would have been utilized in another promotion like AEW Impact? There's, the roster in AEW is too loaded, and Impact, he's not going to get the, you know, the exposure, the national exposure that, you know, the WWE and AEW currently have. So it was the right decision, in my opinion, for him to re-sign a multi-year deal, which may take him to the end of his career, whenever that may be, whether how long this multi-year deal is. I mean, he may wrestle two or three more years for all we know. But I think it's the right thing to do. And I, and I totally support the decision, and I'm glad for him, because I think it's better off for him in the long run. He knows that he's not going to be able, as great as Kevin Owens is, the AEW men's side roster is just totally stacked and loaded. That's my opinion, so it's a good deal. One more thing I had, one more question was, what were your thoughts about um, Rick Steiner's stun uh, is, in, is in NXT? What do you see the future, and have you seen him? Um, I've seen him a little bit. Um, he looks like his father. Um, I, I said to my friend Mike in Orlando, I said, I would love to see Paul Heyman manage him because of the history between the Steiners and Heyman. I would love to see Paul Heyman maybe go manage him and then bring him up to the roster, and I, I think it would be just be, if you know, if you followed the family and the history with the Heyman and the Steiners, I think it would be absolutely one of the most incredible things. Yeah, I do like the kid. I do like him. I've seen him. I think he's got a lot of potential. He's a bit green, but he's got a lot of potential, a lot of ability. Reminds me of his father. And, yes, I'm really excited about to see what the future holds for him and looking forward to seeing where he goes in 2022. Um, I do think he will get called up to the main roster at some point before 2022 is over. I do believe he will be. Yeah, I, I, I've been asked this quite a bit. Do you think he will? Yeah, I think in, by, by the summer, May, June or so, I think I could see him considerably be on the main roster for the WWE. I could see him getting called up. If the epidemic continues and COVID continues to strike and they have to utilize, I could see him getting, you know, getting a couple of spots. It wouldn't even surprise me if he was on a few house shows by now. Uh, but he definitely has got all the ability. It's in the blood. It's in the genes with the family. And I'm sure he will carry the Steiner tradition 
uh, true and true into the uh, into this year and beyond. So yeah, I do like what I've seen of him, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. I think that Paul Heyman would be a great fit once this whole thing with Brock and and Roman fiddles you know fiddles out or whatever you want to call it, fizzles out. I'm excuse me. Um, I think that would be a great idea uh, for him. And if you the, the, the people like me that knew the history between the Steiners and Heyman and that whole thing, uh, that follow it, yeah, I think it would be interesting to see. Uh, and I would like, I mean, look, Arnie Anderson is is, manage, is is a coach to Cody Rhodes, and look how that's working out. So, I mean, who would have thought a horseman and a Rhodes? So why not a Heyman and a Steiner getting together? So that's my thought. So, yeah, I'm... I, I have seen him. I like what I see. I, I can't wait to see more of him, and I can't wait to see what he can do on the main roster at some point. His future is very bright, and his ceiling is is endless. Yes, hands down. So at the 16-minute mark, Happy New Year to one and all from Rough Cuts and from Buddy Barking in the background. As always, may all your matches be your main event. I'll be back with another edition of Rough Cuts. Bill After, my boss, love you. Happy New Year, my friend. Thank you for never stopping believing in me, never giving up on me. Hopefully the Hall of Fame is around the corner for you. I will get to a Hall of Fame edition for 2022 soon enough. But until next time, as I said it, and I'll say it again. Happy New Year. May all of your matches be a main event. See you next week. Take care.